All right. Get, well, get started. I think get started. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna mute my yeah. I, I I took a bunch of notes and then I started to try to work through twelve without six, but um, yeah. We'll, we'll see how where we end up. Um, yeah, to twelve. I mean, from my overall experience, of this chapter was it was one of these chapters that's very high level, I guess. Or yeah, not high level. I'm trying to say. It's like all important stuff, but it's also like, oh my goodness, this is like I, without an actual problem to solve. It's like I'd have to yeah. go back and look at this chapter again. And then for twelve point seven, he kind of left me in the dust on that one. Yeah, um, yeah, I know that's, <laughs> kind of, that's where I'm at a little bit. All right, right well, let me like, let's whoa. get started. Let's get started. Just kind of laying out the exposition. And okay, then we'll talk about. Yeah, yeah, I kind of feel like this chapter is a little bit of like a. Um, what do you call it? like a kitchen sink kind of like a like a yeah. swiss army knife i mean obviously you know your way you're you're sharing your uh slack i think not your oh <laughs> all right hold on um and maybe uh we'll let well i'm sure that um john will catch catch that and not include this part just have like a little pause and say this is the real beginning <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay now we're uh, beginning. Yeah. this right. is the real beginning <laughs> well, it is the best there's nothing really on my slack that's like, no no because you know nobody needs to see which slacks you're part of or whatever just yeah <laughs> but now yeah it's good all right so um you know some of this stuff it seems like we've already kind of covered in terms of like sort of standardizing you know and, and z scores and, and stuff like that uh, i think this is one of these things where, where you, you know, grad school, you learn this type of stuff about how to interpret, you know, standardized or scaled uh, predictors and outcomes. And so, um, by the way, like, uh, I, I'm not, I was trying to get on your level with doing these little, um, um, oh, there he is. I, I got it to kind of work, but there's still a uh, there's like an, must be an extra dollar sign somewhere. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so when, when we, um, you know, when we have just in, just in general, we want to think about you know a predictor um, b sub j, and the, the the coefficient of that predictor uh, represents the average difference in y comparing items that differ by one unit on the js predictor and nothing else, right? So this this is probably if I had to pick like one thing that I've learned probably the most is trying to um, say it in that kind of non-causal language. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, this idea of you know differ by one unit, whatever that unit might be. Um, another thing you know that you know we he, he kind of hammers pretty early is this idea that's you know making doing transformations of predictors or the outcome doesn't actually change the the, the nature of the results. It just changes the kind of how interpretable or or uninterpretable it is. Um, and then talks about. Um, Z scores, which you know are sort of where we put things in units of standard deviations, which is typically pretty useful because units of standard deviations are like a kind of an effect, right? I mean, like you know, if we can put it in that kind of um, scale, we, we kind of can interpret things a little bit more consistently. Um, so. Yeah, another thing they mentioned is like you know, uh, and I I'm, I was going to make like a table of, about this or do something to kind of standardize this, but I didn't get around to it. But you know, the idea is like you know what happens to the intercept when we do these things, right? So if we were to have all predictors all be in z scores or standardized scores, um, that would mean that the intercept is the mean of y when all of the predictors are at their mean value, right? So that was kind of an interesting. Thing to point out because typically well typically talk about you know intercepts being when you know all the predictors are zero um oh and then probably like the most interesting thing out of this whole chapter was this idea of dividing by two standard deviations um yeah that was strange i'm like i've never heard of that before I'm like oh I, yeah I, it's but weird. i get it what he's saying because when you have like a binary yeah. input then it matches yeah. better but i've never actually seen that before never heard of it I mean, I, maybe I have. I just don't know. But in 25 years, I can't think of <laughs> running into it. But um, so when we do that, yeah, it allows us to kind of have more comparable things that when we have bi binary or, or, or indicator type, you know, variables along with, you know, linear variables. So when we do that, there's some changes and now it corresponds to the average predicted outcome with all their inputs at the means. So a little bit different. Um, 
Yeah, and then um, if we standardize both the outcome, or excuse me, the outcome and the predictors, um, you know, the intercept is uh, zero, and the slope is simply the correlation between the two. Now, that's only that's if you only have one predictor, of course, which you know is not necessarily the most common um, situation. So, um, and then the one thing he pointed out, well, this is actually was interesting to me. Like, I, this might be something you would actually want to look at just to kind of see. You know, if you wanted to compare the variance of y and x, but um, so if, given that scenario, the slope of two standardized variables will always be between negative one and one. Um, you know, which which makes sense. Um, but if it is larger than uh, one in absolute value, then the variance of y must exceed that of x. Up, I, I kind of wanted to like do something to play that out or to kind of. Um, see that but I never got around to it um I like this I mean I know we kind of already talked about regression to the mean but you know maybe just to kind of hammer it again I think and I'm guilty of this as I've been having taught like you know undergraduate you know sort of you know statistics or or uh, research methods I've probably said it sometime or another you know regression to the mean is just you know, whatever variable you're measuring, returning to normal or to a more average kind of path, which um, is not what it is. And according to him, and you know, and I've heard this before, and I'm, you know, it's, it's something I probably need to keep reiterating with myself. But yeah, it's basically, you know, what's what's what he's taking as an interpretation is it's not so much about the phenomena changing, but you know, the fact that you know we, we're measuring um, this stuff with error with error. And that's you know driving this sort of phenomena, right? Yeah. This, this idea that um, you know, um, as they say, for any um, data point of, of the predictor, the the point prediction of of its uh, y sub i will be regressed toward the mean, but the actual observed y sub i will not be ex exactly where it's predicted. So, yeah. So I mean, that that's sort of interesting. So it's not really so much of a return to normalcy as it is a um sort of you know just the, the the side effects of imperfect measurement right um yeah that's what i got yeah. out of that too yeah um and then logarithmic transformations i'll be honest like um i've kind of gone back and forth on this over like the 25 years i've been doing research and you know and like it seems like in the late 90s early 2000s everyone was like doing transformations like log transformations of outcomes um, not so much. I, I I can't. I don't know what your experience is, but I can't really think of a lot of situations where the predictors were standardized or, or logarithmically um, transformed. But uh, definitely did more of this. You know, like it seems like when I was a student or an early professional, you know, doing like you know sort of transformations to get a better distribution of of you know your, you know, your outcome or something. Um, but I tend not to do this stuff. I don't know about you, but I tend not to do this type of transformations. I try to find some other way of modeling that, you know, isn't sort of distribution dependent or, or you know, it doesn't need norm normality or whatever. Um, this is interesting. I hadn't really thought about this for a while, but yeah, so the reason why you might want to use natural log as opposed to base 10 is because um, it now puts the... Um, the sort of the whole thing on a proportional differences. So if we have a, a, a coefficient of 0.05, um, it would basically re refers to like um, approximate difference of like five yeah. percent. Do you get you, you did you get that? Because he didn't explain that very well. But as a physicist, this is something you're really familiar with. That is that e to the x is approximately one plus x or small x, right? Right. <laughs> so in fact. You know, you see this a lot in like investing too, like a five percent. You know, right. and sometimes try to treat it as additive when it's not really additive, but for small percentages, it is additive. So, um, mm. e to the, you know, that's basically the point. E to the x, so e to the one point oh five is approximately. Um, I mean, so e to the point oh five is approximately one point oh five. That's what the yeah. point is. But the B mentioned later, like for bigger percentages, that breaks down. You actually have to calculate the exponential, but often it's a small percentage, so you can just quickly estimate. You know, oh, you know, three percent. That's gonna be a one. That's gonna be a one point oh three bigger. You know, three percent. Right. Right. Or sorry, point yeah. oh three as my yeah. as my coefficient. Then that's gonna be about three percent better, bigger. Right. But for bigger coefficients, it won't be. But 
Yeah, well, I like that. Um, hold on. I, I um, Probably the most useful power series expansion in all the world. EVX is one plus X plus higher order terms. <laughs> hold on. Um, I want to let me, oh, okay, stop sharing. All right, so now I just wanted to share uh, some stuff from the book just because. Yeah. Okay. Um, hold on. So, let's see. How about now? Can you see? Oh, actually, never mind. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see the book. Yeah. yeah. I, see book. Um, I also uh, forgot, I didn't, I didn't take any notes on this, but I wanted to. Um, find um, one second let me look here oh I know what it was it was I, I didn't put it in my like presentation but these like modeling um rules I thought that was interesting right um oh by the way I kind of skipped over this you know the, this idea that you yeah know, that's fine yeah. I mean <laughs> I, don't know. I get you. Yeah. I'm yeah. You <laughs> Another thing also like, yeah, this is, this is constantly, especially in social sciences, this is something that we used to be really notorious for, which is making continuous variables discrete, you know, like taking a median split or whatever. Yeah. This is still stuff you see a little bit in like journals of so social science, like psychology journals or whatever, but it tends to go, it tends to be kind of verboten now. Um, well, but this idea of discretizing to model nonlinearity that, that he talks to the next paragraph, that is, is very useful. I've used that a lot, especially for ages. I mean, because usually if you just like plot like some predictor versus age, it'll be like really weird look, it'll, like be very nonlinear. Like, well, I can actually quickly I get a handle on this by just binning the ages up. And that's so useful. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, my background is in developmental psychology. So ages is a really important predictor. And one of the worst things well, you but sure but it, no you're not you're not um you're not throwing you're still using age it's just you're trying to capture the nonlinearity in a most in a very uh you know stepwise fat you basically do a stepwise uh prediction right because unless you look at it, it is pretty linear then you're okay with it but yeah well, it's not. let me put it this way like um if if you gave me data where we have these you know these four indicators um 18 you know to 29 yeah. but like it would be nice if we also had it in like raw form. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I definitely because, wouldn't want to be handed that data that way. No, no I want to do tell you, I want to tell do you myself. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, so often what what I get and you know different you know surveys. No, you're right. You're right. That is often the way the surveys are already pre uh, and that's your. So then the problem is is like and the reason I, I bring this up is so often it could be like you know the binning is wrong. You just didn't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like or you suspect I should say you suspect it's wrong because. You know, there's just something funky going on. Not so, well balanced, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that I agree with. I agree with you there, but I do. I'd like to do bending like that myself. Sometimes you try out different bendings, but yeah, no, for sure. Um, but it was linear. It's linear. Like he shows that plot in the one case where he, he bend it, but he shouldn't have bend it because it's actually pretty linear. Just leave it alone, right? Yeah. And he um, makes that so, point. so I thought this was like kind of real one of the real gems. Oh, ah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So this these general principles. These are probably the things that I you know I'm gonna like. I took some. You know more careful notes on and and you know obviously these aren't just like hard and fast rules but they're like kind of more broader philosophical kind of like issues okay so number one put all input variables that for substantive reasons I, I i like that i'm not sure sure what that might mean it might be expected to be important and predictive yeah i think that's pretty wishy-washy but yeah I, I, yeah you'll know when you see it <laughs> i know yeah yeah i know i mean this is um this is the part like you know I try to tell students and other people like you know how do you know when something should be included well you know you always come back to the all models are wrong you know blah 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 yeah. um but yeah no I think um I think it's fair to say that there's a lot of unmeasured bias in I can say this in medicine clearly because you just, there's a bunch of stuff that you just don't have that you know that would be really cool to have um in terms of you know potential inputs um it's not always necessary to include these inputs as separate predictors. For example, sometimes several inputs can be, you know, so yeah, so you, you can create kind of sort of a, what are called composite variables, um, you know, or you can use like principal component analysis maybe to create like 
you know, scores for that involve multiple things. Um, I would obviously you'd want to be really right. careful about like playing this out because, um, well, I mean, think about it. Some, some here's like, you know, BMI would be an example of a kind of like a total score where you're using multiple pieces of information to create, you know, one kind of thing. Um, but yeah, no, I think um, you, you have to make sure that, you know, you should, I would, I would be, I would want to like do some real careful digging on that total score variable to make sure that it's doing what we thought it was doing, you know? Um, yeah. Um, so for inputs that have large effects, you know, consider including their interactions as well. I'm not sure how down I am with this statement. I mean, obviously having a large effect is a sort of necessary piece to, you know, um, having, having a large effect size is a necessary piece of, you know, potentially have looking at an interaction, but um, I, I would say what should be more important is the theoretical meaning of those potential interactions, right? Um, anyway. uh, yeah, I guess he's saying that's, you know, you would then consider it, then you maybe think about the theoretical reasoning at that point. Yeah. But I was interested in how you react, what your reaction to this particular point might be, because you've mentioned previously that often your uh, colleagues are want to throw yeah. in every interaction possible. So that's yeah, crazy. yeah, and so yeah, interactions are especially in social sciences are like really important because that's really where you get like maybe potentially a more mechanistic or a more fine grained kind of um, thing, you know, vision of like what's going on, right? Like so, if you know only one gender group is really affected by a drug, or if you know in a certain way, or if you know one age group versus another, or one racial group, or whatever is um you know you, you expect there to be kind of like moderation of an effect based on some group membership i mean yeah we, we really want those but at the same time you know we typically are not powered well for them so that's you know one of the popular problems is if you don't have enough data to sort of detect the, the main effects and the you know the interactions at the same time it's kind of ugly um use standard errors to get a sense of uncertainties and yeah, I, I would say that's another thing, like, you know, using this, um, the, the, the Bayesian stuff, you know, and, and, and having, you know, standard errors. I'm, I'm not always sure, like, what I'm supposed to be looking for, you know, like, in terms of, you know, what relative size, you know, difference would be meaningful or, like, you know, what, what kinds of things might I want to see um, for me to, like, really get something from looking. I mean, obviously, if there's, like, you know, one standard error is, like, twice as large as, the, you know, all the others, you know, you're, you're, that's a, that's a giveaway that there's something funky going on here, but it's not often yeah. not that clear, you know what I mean? It's often not as um, black or white in terms of the size. So yeah, I'm, I'm, that's sort of interesting. Uh, make decisions about including or excluding pre pre um, predictors based on a combination of contextual understanding, prior knowledge data. Yeah. So this, I would agree with. And in fact, I would say it's not just contextual understanding. Well, I mean, I guess you could say that. I, I would say the sort of more theoretical understanding of, of the phenomena that you're trying to model overall, right? Like, so if you know something sure. about, about that, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm actually going through this right now with like a, a um, you know, a study where, you know, there's a bunch of variables. I'm trying to predict people's willingness to, you know, try to, a weight loss drug. And um, there's a bunch of things that um i want to measure but one of the most important things is we have a measure of what's called stigma like people's weight related stigma and so you know um that's a really important theoretical kind of piece right because there's a whole literature on how stigma is related to willingness to try to lose weight or you know or whatever so um just as an example right so i mean kind of our understanding of the literature was a real driver there um okay yeah so if, if, if um so these last kind of um points here for number five so if the coefficient of the printer is estimated precisely it generally makes sense to keep it in the model as it should improve predictions um that's sure. sort of interesting yeah. i guess you know how do you know when it's a small standard error i guess is my question um well he means relative to the yeah, I know. the size, right? I mean, the t, yeah. the, the t value or the z value or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, if the standard error of the coefficient is large and there seems to be no good substantive reason, 
for the variable to be included, it can make sense to remove it, as this can also allow the other variables to, to be estimated more stably. Yeah, so this is kind of what I was talking about before. It's like we have a bunch of other variables um, that were actually maybe even more significant, you know, more more correlated with you know this this weight loss thing I was talking about. Um, but this stigma thing was like way more sort of theoretically meaningful, and so. Um, I, I, I made that decision just because I was like, okay, this makes sense. Like there's a, there's a reason for including, including this. That's not just about numbers in this sort of sample specific way. Um, yeah. So yeah. If, the, if the predictor is important for the problem at hand, then we generally recommend keeping it in, even if the estimate has a large standard error, it's not. Okay. Yeah, this is a tricky one, right? Because, you know, there's, I, I don't know, I've done this in papers and a bunch of people do this, which is, you know, you run an initial model and, you know, variables A, B, and D are significant, but C, F, and G aren't. So, you know, you go, oh, let's just throw out the non-significant ones and rerun it. Um, you know, that can be problematic, and, um, you know, and probably should be more theoretically driven, not just like p-value driven. <laughs> Um, yeah, think, absolutely. Yeah, but I think also like this is um, the, the you know the adding of the prior is another great way to um, you know maybe have that. Yeah. I think I'll, I, to my interpretation that you have a, a parameter that's got a large error, right? And you say, oh, that's not important. You then should pause before you throw it out to make sure that it doesn't have some you know like you say yeah. using some prior information using the context. Um, if you if contextually you already thought this wasn't probably going to be very important and it turns out it's not that important and you don't really have any theoretical reason why it should be important then at yeah. that point you're probably justified throwing it out but of course you're going to say something in your paper about why you yeah. know that and justify it but you, in other words the only reason for throwing it out can't be that it's got a large error <laughs> is what i would yeah. say if that's yeah, your only that. reason then i'm gonna have i'm gonna find the whole thing suspect yeah no that's true yeah so um but I think it's also something like, you know, I have never said in a paper, oh, you know, um, we eliminated variable X because the standard error was very large and we feared that it was measuring, you know, only random variation or non-substantive yeah. variation. I don't know. That's that's um, uh, that's an interesting thing. I mean, I guess, you know, that, that's something I, I would look to do, I think, in a future project, actually. Yeah. Um, Okay. Oh, you're right. Sometimes by the time you get to the paper, some of these variables don't even mention at all. You <laughs> know, I know. They're gone from your whole yeah. You threw those out like a year ago. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Yeah. I mean, that's gotta happen. I mean, there's nothing you can do. I guess you have to be very I mean, I guess the more careful you are, the better. But sometimes yeah. in the early days, you don't know where you're going. So yeah. Oh, uh, I know. Um, yeah, this was this was an interesting piece here. Like, so one of the reasons we get better, a good or better performance understanding from a simpler model is that we, you know, we have weak priors. So, so you know, when yeah. priors are weak, you know, we're uninformative as we've talked about repeatedly now. Um, you know, the data obviously is is dri driving the ship more. And um, yeah, so I thought that was interesting. Not necessarily a great reason for having a simpler model. Um, yeah. Oh, this was interesting also. Yeah. So. When we uh, standardize the predictors, which is over here on the right, we see like you know the 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 width, the width of the distributions are, are are much more consistent and, and compared to yeah here. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, that's something I hadn't really considered before. Um, I mean, he mentions in here that standardizing them doesn't affect the, the doesn't affect this the the uh, mm -hmm. regression. And that's true, but it is not the case for um, more complicated, like multi-level models. Sometimes they don't, I mean, it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect it, but numerically it, you can lead into all kinds of problems if you don't standardize, or at least center. Centering seems yeah. critically important for the, for the Monte Carlo Markov chain stuff for more complicated models. Yeah. I just throw that in there as an aside because I found that out by accident one time. <laughs> and I, yeah. I wrote on a forum, why is this not working? You go, center your variables. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Um, so just to kind of go through some of the more conceptual things, this is kind of obvious, but I'll put it out there for potential viewers. Um, so in this, you know, 12.2, um, we're looking at um, uh, age as a predictor of weight and okay. like we talked about before we got these discrete groups 18 um to 29 30 you know so 
all four groups. And this is the model that we get. We get uh, 30 to 44, 45 to 64, and 65 and up, but no 18 to 19, or 18 to 29. Um, feel stupid asking you this, but why why don't we see that in the output? Because that's the baseline, right? The baseline. I was kind of hoping, I, I kind of had that set earmark for, for uh, Alma. I was like, um, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we lost her this week. Um, Probably she's lost, probably like other people, uh, people like, I don't know, maybe she, she lives in a place like where I do, where there's no time, no daylight savings times. Just, maybe. Even though you try to be clear about it. I know uh, Lucio, almost, he missed half of one of his book clubs. He's in a place like that. And then he messaged me and we were able to coordinate. I said, no, here's, you know, here's the time in your time zone. Just make sure we got we, both of us, you know, the, for all, for us, some of us, these book clubs all moved. <laughs> yeah. For people in the rest of the like, United States, these book clubs didn't move. So it's, yeah, it's confusing. Yeah. Oh, th so this 12.3, I, I didn't really get into this, but I thought this would be kind of interesting to think about. Okay. So we have um, data from different countries predicting um, civil conflicts given a set of geographic and political predictors. Yeah. We have estimated coefficients on their Z scores. Um, so why is the coefficient for distance to the border, distance to the capital population, and, um, and GDP per capita so small? Why, I'm why? guessing it has the fact that there these things are collinear, like distance to the border, distance to the capital, are probably collinear, is what I'm guessing is going on. Same thing with population and GDP. Well, yeah, GDP should be collinear with population. GDP per capita, so it's right. I, actually here's one thing I didn't really get. So distance to the border, right? Yeah, what does it even mean? I don't know. Distance, distance to capital what? population. Okay, so like if it's like so if you oh, the like, war, the conflict, right? So I think it's like how far are you? How far does the person, the respondent, living from the capital population? I think that's what it means. Which those are separate things. Well, it says, what is it says, aggression was fit from different countries predicting the rate of civil conflicts given a set of geographic and political predictors, right? Mm. So, what does it mean? Is it the, the location of the civil conflict in the country? Is that what, what they're talking about? I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I believe the distance to the border and distance to the capital could be somewhat colonial, not completely colonial, but it could be related, right? Because it's geographic position. You're just different origin, right? It's a geographic distance with two different origins, so they're going to be. If it's far from the capital, it probably could be far from them, or close to the border. It could be it could be anti-collinear too. Either way, they're highly yeah. related, right? They're core. My speculation would be that distance to border and distance to capital are negatively correlated. Just my a hunch. Yeah, or negative correlated. Be, yeah, either way, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right? or um, but but GDP per capita and distance to capital population that should be pop positively correlated right because you know closer, oh closer, that may be what it is closer you are to the capital of usually that would be like you know more affluent you know uh, you're right they, i had yeah that might be what's going on i was trying to i was trying to figure out some kind of correlation between population and gdp per capita but that shouldn't be mm -hmm. correlated or is I mean, here's another capita, thing. wait is, i thought gdp cap per capita population was for the entire country not mm -hmm. not at the location where the thing happened well, I think it's, these are all, I think the data is for just different countries, right? So I think each row is a different country. So I think. Well, then what well, does distance to border mean? I, I don't know. Oh, I, well, I think uh, maybe from the, from the capital. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I looked at this one because I'm like, what is he talking about? What does I know. He mean? I, I need to see yeah. the data. Okay. I guess all, another reason for like the estimates being so small, I guess, um, is, you know, so each, you know, so in the case of distance, the units are in miles and, you know. Um, well, there's Z scores, so. Well, yeah. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm, I missed reading this. Why are the coefficients so small? And so, okay, the Z scores aren't small. So right. The, the correlation thing, all that thing I said about correlation and everything, it goes out the window. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I thought we were looking at, I thought the Z scores are really small. Not. Well, I guess so. So, like one mile. In, so maybe it's a units issue. Is that what's going on? I think so. Maybe so. Like I think you know you might want to like modify it so it's like in units of ten miles or a hundred. I don't know. I guess it depends on how far these things are. But yeah, one, you know, one um, mile. Oh uh, yeah, it could be the case that uh, you're right. It could be the case that population is like maybe population is in like actual 
how many citizens. So it's a big giant integer. So that coefficient yeah. is gonna be really, really small numbers, not gonna show up in here. That's all that's going on. We were I was looking at something more complicated, like some kind of correlation goal. No, know? yeah. I mean, I, I like I like what you were thinking, but yeah, no, I think it's simply just like you know, yeah, adding miles and adding one person or adding one mile is GDP is a, still like in for cap is probably still a big number. Trivia. Yeah, well, yeah, because it's we're talking about I'm assuming that would be dollars. So yeah, one dollar. Yeah. Added is is pretty minuscule. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's wow. I totally. That's totally right. Messed up on that. Gotta just try to, you know, bob and weave, right? I mean, yeah, just bob, and weave. bob and weave. I was so confident. Oh, it's a collinearity. Oh, <laughs> no, I know it's what, what you're the wrong doing. column. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go. You gotta go with the the challenging <laughs> answer to start. Yeah. Um. So with this, I I don't know. This is no, this is another one. So okay. Um. I'm not even sure if like. My head is on straight to even approach this, but we have this model of, you know, log of um, log weight predicting you know, being predicted by log height. Um, so the standard deviation is 0.25. Right. Errors of okay. So um, we're basically saying within once one uh, z score. Um, yeah. So what do you have to do? I don't know. So we'll have weights within a factor of, I don't know what this really means by weights. I don't know. Uh, you're, you're well, so you're predicting that. weight, right? Oh, okay. Sorry. So, well, sorry. I, think, I thought you meant like, you know, like coefficient weights, not like weight of a person. Sorry. Um, yeah. Um, so if you, um, so if the predicted weight is going to be the exponential of minus 3.8 plus 2.1 log weight, yes. right? Yes, okay, right, um, right, right. The right. error on that is going to be multiplicative of e to the error. So right. when you fill in the blanks, you have to do e to 0.25 and then e to minus 0.25. Right. right, plus or minus, yeah. And whatever that turns out to be, it's not going to be 1.25 because 0.25 is too big to use that approximation. But it's not, it's not going to be too far away from, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 0.75 to 1.25, but it's not yeah. quite there. Actually, let me just open up a notebook real quick. Yeah. Calculate. um okay well anyway that was yeah sorry I, I meant to like spend more time on that but i ran out of, of time um, oops, so it's either 2.5 it turns out to be 1.28 and either minus 0.25 turns out to be 7.778 so it's like from 0.78 to what are the other thing i said is that's what i would say the answer is to that one 1.28 right. 0.78 to 1.28 so it's not too far from 0.75 to 1.25 right probably close enough for uh you know, how well you understand the error, right? Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So I wanted to, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, no, it is. Uh, um, so I wanted to, this is the last thing I got into. Um, this was the, you know, like I said, the main thing. Um, so the, the, we have this pollution data where we have mortality rates and we have various environmental risk factors for 60 metropolitan areas in the U S um, so I I just did the 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 single predictor of looking at levels of nitric ox of NOx nitric okay. oxides. Um, so the first thing I did was just create um, you know because like they wanted us to say okay so create a scatter plot. Do you think linear regression will fit these data well? So I fit the linear regression line, and not so good. <laughs> not so great, right? We have um, you know sort of a lot of. Because it's long outliers where they're not uh, heterogeneity of variance, obviously. Well, I mean, just also just the just where where the, the, the points are distributed is pretty pretty crazy. Um and then um oh yeah, so then I fit just the um and yellow. Of course I forgot to do the thingy. Um okay, yeah. So now I've um this is um, wait a minute. Oh yeah. So we, it's, it's, we have the same kind of deal. It's just flipped, right? So we have, um, this, so this is obviously not well distributed to, to do a traditional linear regression. So I took, uh, oh, actually, sorry. I, I was screwing around with this. Around I put, yeah. tried the square root one. Um, did you plot the log one or does it look like, um, oh, would I plot the, the, the one for the regular, this, this is, what do you mean, like in terms of the the um, just plotting log mort versus not? Oh mort right, right. Like, so right. um, yeah. So this is doesn't really um. Don't seem to be better. 
doesn't seem to be doing much better. So I, um, that's kind of where I, I got stuck. I didn't really know what else. I, I couldn't really think of any predictor or any uh, transformation that would actually make this look any better. You know what, what I mean? What problem is this? 12.6? 12.6. Yeah. And I looked online to see if anyone else had any. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. So anyway, this was, but this was, I, I did the thing where he, um, you know, does the posterior prediction of the distributions. And uh, this was uh, for the, the linear model. And I don't know what I did. This was like, I just did this like five minutes before I got on. So I, I can't even figure out what, what I did wrong here. But unless oh. <laughs> I think, yeah, this is not correct. So this is like, you know, the, the you know, the overall distribution is over here. And this is some, I did something funky. Um, but yeah, this was as far as I could get okay. for today. I mean, I, I was thinking I could try to finish them because one of the things he does ask for is, um, you know, oh yeah, like he wants you to do a multivariable model and uh, to do like to figure out the transformations for all of these things. And I was just like, geez, man, I'm not getting into well, this. I'll, I'll attempt the first two that you look, our first three parts that you did, just to see what I can Yeah, do. yeah, see what, yeah. And then also the That's cross validate. Yeah, if you want to, maybe we start with this next week, that'd be great. Um, yeah. I also just didn't get had a chance to. I was going to try the cross validation stuff um, on some of this, and, um, but oh, yeah, I, that's that's kind of part where I just I found that hard to to do because of um, or that part of the text I found like kind of opaque because he's like, oh, we just need to take the Jacobian into account. He doesn't really explain like the math behind it, and I'm like, okay, I don't like to. I don't like doing stuff where you just tell me to do it. I just I always have a I have yeah. antibodies against that. I'm like, eh. I'm going to have to go dig into how this works and I don't really want to do it right now. So right. <laughs> stop. Yeah, I know, I know the feeling. Um, all right. So that's, that's, I mean, I guess we'll maybe we'll do, we'll spend a little time at the front end of next week um, on, on chapter 12, but then we're getting into generalized. So we're doing, yeah, they piece. signed up to do that once. It's just, you know, yeah, yeah, that's right. Now, yeah. Until we get, you know, you know We'll just, I guess we'll just, we'll just alternate until, yeah. you know, we get, if we, hopefully if we ever get anybody else, that'd be nice, but I don't know that we will. No. Um, but yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah. We can just, um, at, you know, we can be a little more informal too, I think. If you yeah. Want. Um, I, and, you know, take our time if we have to. I mean, we don't want to get bogged down this book forever, but um, yeah. it's a long book. Yeah, it mean, is. We're at part, you know, we're just about to start part three right of generalized linear models then there's part four which is a few chapters on you know very interesting stuff i thought about before and after fitting a regression just look at the table of contents it's post stratification which he mentioned really early on in the book which i thought was interesting missing data imputation that sounds interesting and then yeah. we come to the casual inference part which is uh causal inference part causal yes yeah, sorry <laughs> i mean we can be yeah. casual too if you want but we're gonna be casual about the causal and yeah. uh and then I guess part six is kind of a short part, so that's okay. Yeah, it's actually part six, is just one chapter about what comes next. Is teasing his next book, which I don't know when that's ever going to come out, but volume huh. two, multi level, you know, right? An advanced regression. So um, we're actually pretty far along, actually, not so bad. Yeah, so I'll uh, so I'll sign up for for fourteen then that, and then you know we'll uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll cruise right through this math. We'll cruise right through it. Right. So yeah, that's 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 my story. Um, Only thing I would also ask, though, I think you know, it may come out that one of us is traveling or something like that. At that point, we we're just gonna have to like let each other know so we can say, look, I'm not gonna be here, so we're gonna have to just punt that week. Cause yeah, that's fine. No, yeah, I talk I, to the camera by myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no point in meeting in that case. Yeah, if it's just yeah. the two of us, we better make sure we're consistent on yeah. doing that. But yeah, no, I think um, I, I think yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. You know, either way. But this is a lot easier book than the advanced R. <laughs> I mean, yeah. at least I mean, it feels like it to me. But um, yeah. All right. All right. On that note. I will see you next week. Yeah, man. All Have right. a good rest of your week. See right. ya. You too. Bye. Yeah.